Okay, uh, my name is Michael Edwards. Um, actually, I have the wrong title on there now. I used to have my own contracting uh, company. I did bioinformatics, worked on a lot of different systems. Uh, before that, I actually was in this university, actually on this floor. If you go down, I think it's two offices that way on your right, you'll see my little closet that used to be my office. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of cool to uh, to present from uh, from this room again. I, I've had a lot of presentations here, so um, just a little background on me. Um, I started at the bench, um, did a lot of experiments. I don't know. I think I was on my like 24th RT PCR of the week, and while I was in grad school, this this technology came out called microarrays. Has anybody heard of microarrays? It's basically a way to measure all the gene expression in an entire cell, in an entire organism, right? As soon as I figured that out, I was like, why am I doing like looking at one gene at a time when I can look at everything at the same time, right? What you want, and, and what I'm going to try to stress to you today is what you want is context, is it's not just about one gene, it's about what are, how that gene is interacting with all these other genes to basically create a phenotype, a function, a disease, right? So that's where we're gonna go in and, and that's what I'm gonna stress today is that it's not about, and I know, and I, are, you, are you guys working in labs right now? Yeah. Okay. So I know I'm sure some of you work in labs where they basically specialize on one pathway or one gene or, I think that's garbage. <laughs> I think because here's what happens is you, you know, if you decide I'm going to work on this gene, it's the greatest gene in the world, everything you find is going to be filtered through that gene. What I love to do and what I think bioinformatics gives us an incredible opportunity to do is let the data guide you, right? And so again, I'm going to show you today how we can let the data basically take us you know, you, you'll start at one position, you'll end up in a completely different position. And what I'm going to tell you right now is the way we do it, the, by looking at, you know, not only a gene, but how it interacts within the entire genome is going to tell you way more than you'll get from any experiment you could do. Okay. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to give you some background on cancer bioinformatics. I'm going to give you a little example of, of a project that I did. Um, I've worked a lot on lung cancer. Um, actually, right now I'm working at a, a company called Mycotechnology. It's just down the road a little ways. Um, it's actually work on mushrooms. So I've gone from <laughs> cancer genetics to mushrooms, which has been awesome. And that's another advantage of bioinformatics is you can work. Everything has DNA, right? So, you know, if you do bioinformatics, you can pick whatever project you pretty much want. And that's really cool. And you can also work from home in your underwear. So, <laughs> which is cool. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to give you some background on cancer bioinformatics. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have an interactive session. And that's, I'm glad everybody brought their computers because that's what we're going to do is we're going to actually do basically do what I do is we'll, we'll start with a target and I'm, I'm going to take it from you. This is going to be new this year is we're, you know, it's going to be like improv. You know, we're just going to, basically, we're going to start with, you're going to give me a target, and then we're going to basically for, you know, after I give the, the background on bioinformatics, we're just, for about two hours, we're going to play around and see what we can learn. And as we go through, here's what I want you guys to do, is every website we go to, I want you to bookmark. That's going to be your homework, is that once we're done with this, you're going to have bookmarks to a lot of really great websites for you to learn information at. Okay, um, so we'll have the inter inter interactive demonstration. I'll kind of go through some of the websites, and then if we have time, you can do your own uh, independent exploration, and then we can maybe discuss the results. Okay. So what is bioinformatics? And I, every year I always ask this of my students, and the, you know, it always changes too. <laughs> so what do you think bioinformatics is? Does anybody uh, have a clue? Yes? Collecting data about, let's say, DNA or amino acids. Yep. Well, so what do you do with that information with bioinformatics? Here's a better question. Instead of me asking you what is bioinformatics, how do you think bioinformatics can help your research? What do you think? Yes? Oh, um, you could like figure out how proteins fold and hypothetically how certain um, pharmaceuticals would like interact. With That's more structural bioinformatics, but... 
Close, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Um, you could potentially learn uh, how many like, uh, genes or proteins are affected and there could be uh, different pathways and you can mass collect that data for kind of like a mass interpretation. Okay, so how would you interpret that? Um, so like depending on how many proteins are let's say like expressed on a huge level and let's say like a different pathway like let's say like Hollis's pathway you could um, see that um, specifically out of like a hundred or a million um, uh, genes let's say that maybe like a select a hundred are uh, are kind of expressed or maybe overexpressed now and they're pretty you have like a now focus. Absolutely, we'll go over that too, right? It's finding overrepresented genes or say, say we have a disease A versus B, you know, we're gonna get a bunch of genes different. What do those genes mean, right? And what we're gonna go into, after I tell you how bioinformatics work, it's really simple and you're gonna more, know more about bioinformatics than about 70% of the researchers out there, I swear. Uh, anybody else? How do you think bioinformatics could help your research? Anybody? Yes? Maybe it could help us to determine like the function of like a knockout gene. Uh-huh. And like the knockout gene and we see like uh, what effects it has on like other parts of like in other like other proteins and all that. Okay. Like uh, if you knock this gene out, what changes in gene expression maybe it, yeah. it causes? Yes, absolutely. We we absolutely do that. Um, you know, my, my kind of simple de definition is, you know, bioinformatics is what you're doing is you're, you're taking lots of information and trying to distill that into a picture. Um, and I, I kind of use this as an example. You know, I don't know, when you were young, you know, if your parents ever took you to IHOP or something, they'd always have those placemats and they'd have the picture saying, hey, you know, you've got these two pictures, find out what's different, right? And in bioinformatics, that's, that's pretty much what I do. I take two systems that kind of look the same. And then I go basically, what is different of A, say this is like healthy individuals versus B, which say individuals with a particular disease, right? And here's the nice part is I see you guys looking there and you're trying to find the differences, aren't you? <laughs> In this paper. So you're like, yeah, you can leave the room now. We're, we're good. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a natural human process is to find patterns in things. And that's why I love... You know, when I try to explain bioinformatics to like some 60 year old, like um, ancient professor, like it's really, really hard. I love talking about bioinformatics to you because you all grew up with computers. You grew up with playing video games. Video games is all about pattern recognition, right? This is what we do in bioinformatics is I sit there and I say, what pattern is in this condition that isn't in this other condition, okay? What you can do is you can kind of think of all this data as pixels, right? Um, who knows how many pixels are in your, you know, average HD television set? Any ideas? How many boxes? All right, I'll tell you, it's about 8 million, right? When you're watching TV, do you see those 8 million boxes? No, anybody? No. <laughs> Good. And if you do, you know, come talk to me. I, I got some government work for you. <laughs> no, I mean, when you watch the movies, you know, you know, in actuality, all you're watching are boxes, but these boxes make you laugh, they make you cry, you know, they can make you do all kinds of things, right? But really in actuality, you're not just watching boxes, you're watching zeros and ones, right? It's almost like the Matrix, <laughs> you know, have you ever watched the Matrix movies and they're looking at the like the zeros and ones coming down and you're like, oh no, Neo's in trouble. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel sometimes with this. So that's really what I'm trying to do in bioinformatics is take these pixels, put them together, make a picture that I can, whoever I'm collaborating with or whoever I'm working with, the scientist on the bench to say, hey, here's what's going on. Now plan your experiments, further experiments accordingly. Okay. So where does all this information come from? And there is a ton of information. This is like the heyday of bioinformatics. There is so much information out there. Scientists could stop sacrificing mice, running westerns, doing RT-PCRs, clinical trials, and I'd have enough data for three careers easily. There is so much data out there. And that's another thing I'm going to stress today is that it's not just about analyzing your data. The true power of bioinformatics is analyzing everybody else's data because there's a ton of it out there. 
All right. Anybody hear the central dogma of biology? We used to bow to this back in grad school. This was like, you know, this was dogma for sure. You know, you have DNA that has genes in it that makes RNA and that RNA eventually transcribes protein, right? The secret of life right here, right? And with just this information, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of information, right? You've got 64, 6.4, if you're looking at humans, you know, about 6 billion nucleotides, which contain about 25,000 genes, which also, you know, which give rise to about uh, 500,000 different proteins. Again, all of this information, I mean, this is a ton of information, but there's actually more, right? Uh, anybody here of microRNAs? Cool. Sometimes I give this to uh, um, high school kids and they're just like, micro what? <laughs> <laughs> then I got to spend an hour. Uh, basically, microRNA is a way to, you know, to modulate RNA expression, right? And we can measure this, right? We know these microRNAs target certain, um, certain RNAs, certain species of genes. You know, we can basically model that and figure out maybe what's going on, right? And even the 25,000, do you think 25,000 genes produce 25,000 different transcripts? Heck no, right? We have introns. We have int exons. I was once studying a, a gene that had 11 different transcripts and they all did something different and it was a pain in the ass, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> but, but again, you know, you have that, you know, complexity, even with just the, you know, 25,000 genes that can give rise to lots of different transcripts, right? And then the proteins, the proteins are a mess. I started out uh, in proteomics. Um, I, I did a postdoc in that and it's just, you know, you can do just about anything to a protein. You can acetylate it, you can add a methyl group, you can, you know, it's like a car. You can modulate it anyway. You can dual exhaust, you know, headers, whatever you want. So lots of different ways, to, and, and again, we can measure these proteins as well. Let's go back to the DNA. The DNA, it's not just the nucleotides, but it's actually the structure of the DNA itself. That's a huge deal, right? You have histones. These histones can be methylated. You can have compaction of the, the DNA. I will tell you right now that the biggest controller of transcription isn't promoters, right? It isn't the sequence. It's actually the structure. How easy that transcription you know, machinery can get in there and transcribe the gene. That's what's really driving all this stuff. Right. You look at, you know, every cell in your body has the same DNA. Right. But does a muscle cell look like a fat cell? No. Right. It's all about what genes get expressed and what don't. And again, that's through the chromosomal uh, structure. Epigenetics. Everybody, anybody heard of epigenetics? Same thing. So, again, what I'm stressing here is there's lots of different there. <laughs> The amount of data you can collect on a biological sample is almost limitless, right? But now, but the secret is how do we take all this information and put it together into a picture? So on just basically the, the, the simplest way to kind of look at this and, you know, the simplest example of what I do as a bioinformatician is I take a bunch of samples, you know, say we've got our controls here. Do I have a, I do not have an arrow. Gosh dang it. Okay. So we take our controls, you know, we have a bunch of control, you know, people that are healthy, you know, we'll measure the amount of gene expression, the types of genes that are on and off, the levels of them. And then we'll take a bunch of people, say, with a particular disease that we've age matched or, you know, kind of matched to the, to our control system, but they'll, you know, they're, they're matched with everything except these, these individuals have a disease. And what you can do is, then you're just gonna do simple statistics. You can do an ANOVA, T-test, Mann-Whitley, all this stuff. But at the end of that, what you end up with is a list of genes that are different, right? Here is what, this is, <laughs> this is the bread and butter of what I do. It's interpreting and understanding what's going on with these genes, right? So we are going to do that today. But it's not only just finding differences between different conditions, it's also about finding what's similar and what's different. And a lot of people don't utilize this. Has everybody heard of correlation? 
I have a whole lecture. I talk about correlation and <laughs> it's, it's a very underutilized uh, skill set as far as biological data goes. So given up here, if you can see, I wonder if there's a, is there a pointer? That is a pin. <laughs> All right, never mind. Do you, you have a pointer? No, sorry. Oh, okay. See ya. <laughs> All right, so here on this, if you look on the left, you'll see a, basically this is a gene expression of two different genes, right? The one on the top, two different genes, same study. The levels, those bars that you see there, basically the higher the bar, the more gene expression in that particular sample. The lower the bar, the, the lower the expression, right? We have two genes up there. What do you notice about those two genes? Do they look alike, behave alike? What's really cool, you can see here, look on this very end, you'll see this one's down, this one's up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down, right? They're following the same pattern. When that happens, when two genes, when you have lots of different samples, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you know a person, right, you see this person and they're always with this other person, like you see this person, you're always seeing the other person, you don't see that person, you don't see the other person. What would you expect about those two individuals? You think they'd be friends? Yeah, of course, right? They're hanging out, right? You never see the one without the other. Genes are kind of this, a very similar way that if genes have similar patterns across many different conditions, they're probably working together, right? They're probably super friends. I can always tell how old my crowd is by this picture. This is what I used to watch on Saturday mornings. And it, it still amazes me that no one questioned Batman about having an adolescent teen in underwear that he was hanging out with. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody heard of the Wonder Twins? No? Jeez, okay. <laughs> Now I know what my boomer parents feel like. Okay, so, so we have that condition, right? If you have patterns where things act like over many different samples have the same pattern, they're probably working together. Now we have the opposite. Look at these other two genes, right? When it's high here, it's low here. It's high here, it's low there, right? Opposite pattern. What do you think's going on there? Yes, they're Legion of Doom, they're enemies, right? They're probably, one is probably inhibiting the other and that as it goes up, it pushes the other one down and vice versa. Another very important re relationship when you're looking at data to, to, to think about, right? It isn't everything, it kills me, you always see this, you know, somebody will do an expression data or do it in a, like especially cancer or some kind of disease. And they're always fascinated on what goes up with a disease, right? Especially inflammation diseases. Here's what happens is if I take some cells and I expose virus to it, the cell freaks the F out. <laughs> it just goes crazy, right? And all these genes go up and down and everybody's like all excited, but they're just in inflammation genes, right? I'm probably not gonna get a lot of good information on that. But if I look at the things that actually go down with the inflammation, which is probably what the virus is actually targeting, I get a lot better information, right? So again, it's not about just things going up with a disease, it's also think about things going down.